the dawn of creation, a time when the earth was still in its formative stages, a race of beings known as the Giants or Gigantes came into existence. These awe-inspiring creatures were not born in the conventional sense, but rather emerged from the very essence of the world itself. They were the offspring of Gaia, the primordial goddess of the earth, and Uranus, the god of the sky. The Giants came to be following the actions of Cronus, castrating his father Uranus. The result of this daring act not only freed the Titans, but also gave rise to Aphrodite, the goddess of love, the Arrhenias, the goddesses of vengeance, the Meliae, the Ashwood Nymphs, and the Giants. Aphrodite was born from the union of Uranus's severed parts and the sea itself, while the Arrhenias, the Meliae, and the Giants were born from Uranus's blood, which touched Gaia, impregnating her with this new generation of formidable beings. This unusual birth made them unique and powerful, marking them as a force to be reckoned with in the ancient Greek mythological landscape. From their very conception, they were destined to play a significant role in the myths and stories of ancient Greece. The giants were a remarkable and diverse group of beings, unlike any others in the mythological pantheon. Their appearance and characteristics varied widely, leading to a rich tapestry of legends surrounding them. Some accounts describe them as towering behemoths, standing as tall as five meters, while others believed they weren't necessarily giants in stature, but possessed incredible strength and power that set them apart from ordinary mortals. What truly made the giants unique was their distinctive blend of human-like features and monstrous attributes. Some appeared as massive humanoids, resembling giant men with incredible physical prowess. However, Others possessed more fantastical elements, such as lion's heads, serpent tails in place of legs, and even a thousand arms. Their diversity wasn't limited to their appearance alone. The giants' abilities and strengths also varied. Some were known for their immense physical power, while others possessed magical talents and abilities that defied the laws of nature. The number of giants in Greek mythology was vast, but some of the most well-known were Alcyoneus, a colossal giant of immense strength was a towering figure, even among the giants. This made him a formidable force on the battlefield. He possessed a rugged and imposing appearance, with features that showcased his primal and monstrous nature. Alcyoneus was known for his invulnerability, making him impossible to defeat. However, there was one condition. This invulnerability only existed as long as he remained within his homeland of Pauline. He was considered to be one of the strongest amongst the giants. Enceladus, a giant with a monstrous and grotesque appearance, he possessed a hundred serpent heads and serpent legs, each writhing with ferocity. Enceladus was a menacing and formidable giant. He was known for his audacity in challenging the might of the Olympian gods. He was among the giants who rebelled against the divine order and sought to overthrow the gods' dominion. Polyboats, a massive and imposing giant, similar in stature to his brethren, possessed the power to reshape the land itself. He had control over the geography and could manipulate the earth, water, and natural elements. This ability allowed him to cause earthquakes, shape coastlines, and disrupt the natural order of the seas and lands. Porphyrian, a giant of colossal stature, towering over others on the battlefield, his sheer size and formidable presence made him a commanding figure among the giants, instilling fear in his adversaries. Renowned for his immense strength, Porphyrian, along with Alcyoneus, were considered the strongest amongst the giants. The Aloidae, Hevialtes and Otis, twin giants of exceptional size and strength, they were immediately recognizable from their matching caps and hunting spears. Ephialtes and Otis once attempted to scale Mount Olympus, directly challenging the gods' dominion. As with many conflicts in Greek mythology, the war between the giants and the gods of Mount Olympus had its roots in a series of provocations and challenges. These colossal beings dared to challenge the divine order of the heavens. They were not content with merely living on Earth. No, they had their eyes set on the sky. Their first crime was hurling rocks and flaming oak trees at the heavens themselves. The sky set ablaze with fire and stones hurtling towards the celestial realm, a defiance that shook the very foundations of creation. But that wasn't all. The Gigantes arrogance knew no bounds. They enslaved their fellow mortals, treating them as nothing more than playthings, 
all because they believed their immense size and strength made them superior. Their second crime was their attack on the race of men. They violated the rules of justice, disregarded the gods, and waged war against those whom mortals considered divine benefactors. The Gigantes rampaged through the land, subjugated the common people, and rebelled against the gods themselves. The world was in turmoil. But it was one act in particular that would ignite the flames of divine retribution. Alcyoneus, one of the mightiest of the Gigantes, committed a deed so daring and sacrilegious that it sent shockwaves through the heavens. He dared to steal the sacred cattle of Helios, the god of the sun. This sacrilegious act was a direct challenge to the divine order, as the cattle were considered sacred and inviolable. Helios was not one to take such an affront lightly. He brought this grievance to the attention of the other gods, and it was decided that the giant's actions could not go unpunished. The theft of Helios's cattle and the giant's defiant and challenging nature ultimately lead to a great and cataclysmic battle known as the Gigantomachy, a war between the divine forces of Olympus and the formidable Earthborn giants. As the tension between the giants and the Olympian gods continued to escalate, an oracle's prophecy emerged, casting a shadow of uncertainty over the outcome of the impending conflict. The prophecy, like so many in Greek mythology, held the key to a critical turning point in the unfolding narrative. The prophecy foretold that the giants, formidable as they were, could only be defeated with the aid of a mortal hero. This revelation sent shockwaves through the divine realm, for it implied that even the mighty gods of Mount Olympus would not be enough to overcome the earthborn giants. This prophecy set the stage for a profound and dramatic moment. It foreshadowed the emergence of a mortal champion who would play a pivotal role in the outcome of the Gigantomachy, a hero whose destiny would be inexorably linked to the fate of both the giants and the Olympian gods. The oracle's words hung in the air like an unspoken challenge, paving the way for a unique and unforgettable chapter in the epic tale of the giants and their clash with the gods of Olympus. Gaia, the ancient goddess of the earth and mother of the giants, learned of this prophecy and could not bear to see her formidable offspring face the wrath of the Olympian gods unaided. She was determined to shield her children from harm and protect them in the looming conflict. To this end, she embarked on a quest to cultivate a powerful herb, one that possessed the mystical properties needed to render her children invulnerable to mortal weapons. This herb, the existence of which had been a closely guarded secret of the earth itself, was believed to possess unparalleled magical properties. Gaia scoured the far reaches of her domain, traversing mountains, forests, and caverns in search of this elusive plant. It was said that the herb was so rare that it could only be found in the most remote and hidden corners of the earth. However, Gaia's intentions did not go unnoticed by Zeus, the king of the Olympian gods, and a shrewd and cunning deity. He was aware of her efforts to protect the giants and thwart his divine authority. To counter his grandmother's plans, Zeus took cunning measures to ensure that the herb would remain out of Gaia's grasp. He prevented Eos, Selene, and Helios, the gods of the dawn, moon, and sun from appearing to shroud the herb in darkness. Taking this opportunity, Zeus located and destroyed the herb, thwarting Gaia's plans. Without the herb, Gaia feared for her children, the giants. But which mortal hero could possibly be a threat to the immense strength of the giants? As tensions reached its boiling point, the conflict between the giants and gods erupted into an all-out war. The Gigantomachy, as it came to be known, was the War of the Giants, a cataclysmic battle of cosmic proportions that burst with thunderous fury. The gods were severely outnumbered in the battle. The giants amassed 100 fierce brethren to challenge the mighty gods of Mount Olympus. At the side of the gods stood the 12 Olympians, Zeus, Hera, Demeter, Poseidon, Ares, Athena, Aphrodite, Artemis, Apollo, Hephaestus, Hermes, and Dionysus. The Morai, the three goddesses of fate, who wove the threads of destiny, Nike, the goddess of victory, and various other allies. The giants and the gods clashed in a destructive battle. But despite the strength and power of the gods, the prophecy proved to be an undeniable force. The giants held their own, even managing to force the gods to lose ground during the battle. 
The Olympians knew they needed a mortal hero on their side if they were going to win this war. The gods searched the lands, and one hero stood out from the rest. This mortal hero was Heracles, the son of Zeus and Alcmene, a mortal woman from one of his many escapades. Heracles was renowned for his strength, courage, wit, and of course, his famous twelve labors. Despite Hera's hatred of Heracles, she knew she could not object to this decision. Heracles' role in the war would prove to be instrumental in securing victory for the gods. As the war raged on, the gods and giants broke off into their own individual battles. Heracles faced the formidable giant Alcyoneus, a fearsome adversary who possessed an invulnerability tied to his homeland. As long as he remained in his native land, Alcyoneus could not be killed. Alcyoneus led the charge as the giants climbed up Mount Olympus. Heracles stood at the top along with the gods and began unleashing his bow. Eventually, Heracles shot enough arrows into Alcyoneus's body, causing him to lose his grip and fall back down to the earth below. Injured, Alcyoneus attempted to return to his homeland of Pallene to recover. Athena told Heracles to not let this opportunity slip away and that he needed to finish the giant now. Heracles, with courage and determination, descended to earth in pursuit of Alcyoneus. Alcyoneus managed to reach his homeland, but Heracles had a plan. As they struggled for control, Heracles managed to drag Alcyoneus away from Pallene, thereby negating the giant's invulnerability. With the giant's defenses gone, Heracles struck him down with relentless force. His tactics and sheer strength led to a decisive victory in this critical confrontation. Porphyrian, renowned for his vast size and strength, was known to be as strong as Alcyoneus. As Porphyrian reached the top of Mount Olympus, he roared, searching for his first foe. In the midst of the conflict, Porphyrian managed to corner Hera between the rocks and a sheer cliff. Porphyrian's intentions were less than pure. Not only did he seek to defeat the goddess, he also sought to violate the queen of the gods. Hera fought valiantly, but the giant's strength was immense. As the giant closed in on her, Hera called for help. Zeus would not stand idly by. Hearing the call of his queen, Zeus struck Porphyrian with a flurry of thunderbolts dazing him. But that was not enough to deter the giant. As he attempted to continue his pursuit, Heracles rejoined the battle. Setting his sights on Porphyrian, Heracles drew back his bow and launched a perfectly aim arrow at the giant. The arrow pierced the giant in a vulnerable spot, causing him to collapse to the ground. The combined efforts of Zeus and Heracles, father and son, deterred a horrific act from taking place and defeated one of the most formidable giants. Athena, the goddess of wisdom and warfare, faced the colossal giant Enceladus on the battlefield. He was a monstrous and grotesque beast, for he possessed a hundred serpent heads and serpent legs, each writhing with ferocity. Athena knew that brute force alone would not be enough to defeat such a formidable opponent. She relied on her divine wisdom and tactical brilliance to outmaneuver the giant. She utilized her agility to evade the giant's attacks while searching for a weakness. She seized an opportunity when Enceladus momentarily lost his balance while swinging his massive weapon. With impeccable timing, she struck him with her divine spear, causing the giant to stumble and roar in pain. Injured, Enceladus attempted to escape, descending back down to earth. Athena, however, would not let her chance for victory slip away. She pursued the giant, delivering another powerful blow before sealing his fate. She imprisoned Enceladus under the island of Sicily, quelling his flame. Polyboats, a massive giant, sought to challenge Poseidon, the god of the seas. He was a formidable adversary, and he harbored a deep animosity toward Poseidon, who ruled over the seas. Polyboats possessed a similar power to Poseidon. He too could manipulate the earth, water, and natural elements. The giant sought to challenge the divine order and take control of the vast realms of the oceans. They took the battle to the seas, where polyboats summoned colossal waves and whipped up a tempestuous storm, trying to unleash the fury of the seas against Poseidon. Poseidon, however, was not to be easily defeated in his domain. With a powerful thrust of his trident, Poseidon split the sea itself, creating a colossal chasm that swallowed the rushing waves sent by polyboats. The god unleashed a torrent of water that surged around the struggling giant, trapping him within a watery prison. Polyboats thrashed and roared, 
but he was powerless against the god of the seas and the relentless force of the waters. Victory within his grasps, Poseidon ended the battle by ripping apart the island of Niseros and buried the giant beneath it. Ephialtes, one of the twin giants, found himself in a fierce battle with Apollo. While Ephialtes was a giant, he did not possess the strength and stature that Elysioneus and Porphyrion did. He managed to get Apollo on the defensive, forcing the god to create distance between them. This distance, however, actually played in Apollo's favor, for he encountered his mortal half-brother Heracles. Together, Apollo and Heracles drew back their bows, launching arrows at Ephialtes. Apollo shot the giant in his right eye, while Heracles shot his left eye, ultimately striking down yet another giant. A number of unnamed giants managed to corner Aphrodite, the goddess of love. Her allure was intoxicating the giants, and they sought to have their way. She called upon Heracles and retreated towards a cave where Heracles was hiding. The giants pursued her, filled with lust, and entered the narrow cave one by one. There, they were ambushed by the mighty Heracles in a series of one-on-one -on -one battles where Heracles emerged victorious. The battles continued, each god fighting against their own formidable opponents. Dionysus fought Eurytus, Artemis fought Gratian, Zeus fought Olympus, Hephaestus fought Mimas, Hermes fought Hippolytus, Ares fought Mimon, the Moirai fought Thune and many more. In the end, many of the giants were defeated. As they tried to make their escape, Zeus and Heracles made sure that their crimes would not go unpunished. Zeus struck the fleeing giants with his thunderbolts weakening them, while Heracles would deliver the finishing blow with his piercing arrows. From the 100 giants that waged war against the gods, only a handful managed to escape with the help of Gaia. Gaia, distraught at the outcome, managed to save some of the fleeing giants by transforming them into various creatures and animals. The giant Aristeus was transformed into a dung beetle to avoid the wrath of the gods, an ironic twist of fate. Thus, the gods emerged victorious, ending the threat posed by the giants. The outcome of the Gigantomachy was a resounding victory for the Olympian gods. The giants, once defiant and formidable, were either vanquished in battle, sealed beneath the earth's surface, or forced into hiding. The world was forever changed by the consequences of this cosmic conflict. Some believed that the rumblings of volcanoes and earthquakes were the result of the giant struggles to break free from their subterranean prisons. These seismic disturbances were a reminder of the ancient battle that had reshaped the cosmos. However, Gaia would not simply let the legacy of the giant end. Using the still warm blood of the giants that drenched the battlefield, she created a memorial to her fallen children. She refashioned them into a human form, creating a new race of humans. These humans possessed a deep hatred for the gods and relished in cruelty and bloodshed. The aftermath of the Gigantomachy brought about a transformed world order. Heracles, in recognition of his pivotal role in securing victory for the Olympian gods, was granted the ultimate reward, immortality. Upon his death, the gods promised Heracles that he would ascend to Mount Olympus to join the ranks of the gods, taking his place among the divine pantheon. The legacy of the Gigantomachy endured as a symbol of the enduring conflict between order and chaos, a central theme in Greek mythology and the human experience. However, as time passed, Gaia's anger and resentment continued to smolder beneath the Earth's surface. She plotted further schemes to challenge Zeus and the Olympian gods. Together with Tartarus, Gaia gave birth to a beast that she believed could overthrow the rule of the Olympians. This beast was the father of all monsters, Typhon.